Welcome everyone. Can someone just comment? Because I think I might have accidentally turned off commenting, but I don't know how. So if if someone can just type something in the comment box and make sure I I haven't turned them off. There we go. Hi. You found us, Michelle. All right. So we'll get started in just a couple of minutes. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this Tuesday afternoon. We're doing this Really, really pretty but super simple um, silhouette, right? Um, oh, yeah, get that homework done. Yeah, this is great to have in the background. <laughs> um, so this is a, a really kind of simple uh, silhouette, but it's super pretty, right? And we'll break down those trees um, nice and slow step by step and we're getting a nice blend on with our background and we're gonna do our stars we can do them with our you know paint paint tap method or just um, dotting the back end of a, a paintbrush so why don't you get all your supplies ready if you haven't yet I'm using black, yellow, blue, red, and yellow paint, so black and white, and the primary colors. And if you don't have paint and canvas, that's totally fine. This this will work really nicely with a crayon or a chalk or a pastel and, or watercolor. Watercolors will be great for this. And if you don't have a black paint, a nice Sharpie on top of pretty much anything will work. Also, um, what is that stuff called? Like white out. White out is really great for for those stars and the moon. So yeah, we'll just we'll get started in a a couple minutes. I actually got to make sure I got my my canvas ready, my brush. Oh, I need actually I don't have my cup of water, so I need to go do that. So I will be right back. Okay, I got my cup of water. I got my brushes all set. Hi, Anya. And um, again, we're doing white and black and the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Those are really all you need. What else? As we're waiting for others to get here. I currently have um, the Twilight movie on mute on my television. Uh, I think I've seen the Harry Potter movies approximately three times. They've run it on the Sci-Fi Network and USA. What else has been on TV? Hmm. I'm waiting for the Lord of the Rings to play, but I haven't seen that yet. But Harry Potter's been on almost all the time. Anyway, so I hope you guys are all doing well. We're hanging in there. I think, what is this, like our fourth or fifth week of painting together? How about that? Looking behind me out my window. Kind of overcast and gray, so we need some color. We'll get this nice sunset to bring some color into our faces. My cat is on the couch. She's licking her foot. So everything is well. All is well in the world. Okay? Um, so... I'm assuming everybody's ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to move move this away for the moment. Am I going to balance it over there? No. Put it down here. Nope. 
all sorts of so many wires around here. I'm gonna move these around. Okay. Let's do this. So we want, of course I take the painting away and then I'm gonna bring it back and show it to you. <laughs> so we are starting with this this awesome blended background, right? This sunset. And we're gonna start at the top with black paint, just a wee, wee, wee bit of black strip right across the top, and we're gonna work our way down nice and slow. So I'm gonna start with my big flat brush. Oh, la la, French class, that's all I got. Uh, je m'appelle Jacqueline, je suis de New York. Uh, j'ai 38 ans. That's all I got. So have fun at French, and we'll we'll paint later. Um, all right. So I got my big brush. I'm going into my black paint. All I want to do is get a strip right across the top. Maybe just a little bit more there. And this, this black strip is gonna blend down with me. I don't have to add any more black. The black is so strong that I can just leave that there and it will help um, get into the other paint colors that we're gonna be using. So with my brush, um, it still has the black paint on it and that's okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna tap into my blue paint, still with that black paint on top. I'm gonna go right beneath that black and the black that's already in my brush is gonna come off and mix there and that's exactly what I want. I'm gonna go back and forth and go up into that black strip and then move down. So back and forth, up and down. Okay. And because I want to kind of tone down my blues once I get there, I want to start adding red now, even though you're not really going to see it yet, okay? But this, this blue is kind of toned down, not only because of the black that we're going to trail with us, but also some red. So don't worry if you don't see the red right away. I'm gonna tap, in, tap into some red. Again, I didn't even wash my brush. I didn't even wipe off any excess paint, but I'm gonna put that right in there. And I don't know if you can tell through the video, but what happens is you get a nice purpley thing happening. It's very subtle because that black is so strong, right? Back and forth and back and forth and up and down. And I'm gonna grab some more blue Again, I didn't wash my brush. Go right beneath that and back and forth and back and forth and up and down. And I wanna continue kind of getting that purpley thing to come out. So I'm gonna tap into some red Back and forth and back and forth and up and down. Getting a nice blend. I can go back up all the way to the top into the black maybe if I wanna bring some of that down. All those colors are just gonna continue mixing together. Get a nice kinda of dark, almost stormy, kinda of purpley color coming down here. All right, so now at this point, I want to lose some of my darkness. In other words, I don't want to I don't want to continue bringing that dark dark color down. So if I look at the original, I want to start getting towards these more bright blues, okay? So I am going to find my paper towel. Aha. Find my paper towel and I'm going to wipe off any excess paint there. All right, I don't need to give it a rinse. I'm just gonna try to get off as much paint as I can with 
with that paper towel. And now I'm going to go back into straight blue and I should get a nice brighter blue there. Go right underneath where we've been working. Oop, want some more. Give me some more of that blue. Back and forth and up and down. There we go. That's cool. Back and forth and up and down. can't help myself I want to go all the way back up to get that really smooth getting all these colors to talk to each other all the way up to the tippity top maybe and then back and forth all the way down nice I am going to wipe off more paint now because I got that I went up to the top and I got some more of that black dark color so I want to make sure that's all gone and now I'm going to dun, 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 dun. let's see where we are compared to my original so I know what's happening yeah so now I want to kind of transition into some white and blue so let's let's just go into straight white for now and see what happens. That's what I do with most of most things in my life. Let's do this and just see what happens. <laughs> um, so I've got that white paint on my brush. It, I didn't clean my brush, so I still have some pigment on it, and that's fine. Back and forth, back and forth. Kind of work that white into those bristles, and then I can start going upwards. Oh yeah kind of go up more. I can kind of lighten up that blue that I have and bring it back down. Back and forth and up and down. Go up higher and then I'm bring if I go up higher, I start bringing in that white up higher and then that kind of can brighten things or soften things as we go up higher. This is all about patience, right? Back and forth and up and down. And we get nice and kind of a soft blend. Alrighty. I am going to once again wipe off my brush. And I am going to give it a nice rinse because we're gonna be kind of switching colors here. I'm gonna continue adding white, but I'm gonna go into yellow next. And whenever I'm transitioning from blue to yellows, I wanna make sure my brush is nice and clean because we don't wanna turn green too bad. All right. Got my brush clean. I'm going to go back into my white. Got more, more white paint. I'm going to go right under that blue. Start blending there. Just a little bit. Just a wee bit. Let's grab some more of that white. up just a little bit to grab some of that blue and I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow still on my brush with the white on it and I'm gonna start lower than we have been because I don't again I don't want that white I don't want that yellow to blend in too hard with that blue I'm just gonna slowly bring that up slowly slowly not too hard there we go. Nice. 
Okay. Whoopsie, I didn't go slow enough. I jumped too hard. There we go. I want to blend some of that up there. I kind of don't mind that, that kind of glowy color there. All right. Now I want to grab some more yellow. I think I'm adding more yellow here than I did in the original. Let's compare. Yeah, I have a little bit more. I went... I went farther down with the blue in the original here. That's okay. That's okay. I'm gonna pull down some of this yellow here. And now a little touch of red. Just a little bit of red there on my brush. I can go It's just very, very little. I'm gonna go back and grab some more. A little red goes a long way. We can always add more. It gets harder to take it away. And there goes my clementine rind. Oh, okay. Back and forth and up and down. How's it going out there? Getting our nice sunset happening here. Going up a little bit higher. How about that? Nice. We're doing well. I'm getting a lot of thumbs up from, from I'm assuming, Miss Anya. So, and I'm just gonna continue with that red all the way down. Most of the bottom of the painting will be covered in black anyway. So we don't have to worry too much about that down there. All right. back and forth and up and down. And we got a nice little blended sunset here, right? Your sunset was probably gonna look a little bit different than mine and that's okay. I mean, my sunset looks different than mine. <laughs> In the original, I kind of went a little bit lower with my blues and that's okay. Not all the paintings are gonna look alike, and that's what's so cool about this. I love seeing your paintings. I say that every time, and I mean it every time. I love seeing your paintings. Oh, there's an old student of mine watching. Hey, Al Hassan. Maybe he's just stopping by quick. Um, so, yeah, I love seeing the photos that you guys post. They bring me so much joy during these very strange times of being home all day. Um, I, I love hearing that the kiddos are getting their, their schoolwork done and their homework done, but still finding time to paint. That makes me so, so happy. Um, I think art, um, for me anyway, it gives me joy. It gives me peace. So I hope, I hope that, um, we add a little color to your day today and make it a little bit better among all. Hi! Hi, Al Hassan! It's, it's good to see you popping in. Um, Al Hassan was an old student from, oh gosh, I don't know how many years ago and graduated from uh, the law school at Penn State. So yeah, good to see you. Good to see you. Um, so once we have our uh, background done, we do get a little break. We want this to dry a bit, okay? Um, and actually we can put our, our stars down next. So it doesn't have to be completely dry, but um, if you're catching up, with your your background and your sky then that's that's fine because we do we do get a little break so a nice snack break if you need to use the restroom break I am going to wipe off my brush and give it a nice good clean rinse um, because we'll be moving on I'll be moving on to a smaller brush for my stars in just a moment so I can clean this
Alrighty. Okay. So I'm again I'm just wiped off excess paint from my big brush. I gave it a nice good clean rinse. And what we can do now is I'm going to move on to a smaller brush. Okay. And we can do stars in two two ways. Right? So the non-messy way is just taking the back end of a small brush and if it's a nice round uh, some brushes have like beveled or pointed edges uh, or back end so if it has a nice round tip at the end I can just dip into my white paint and I can just stamp here and there where I want some stars to be okay we can do it like that. Ta da! Okay. Or, and I'm going to have to flatten out my surface here. Or we can do a little tap tap. So I'm just going to remove my ledge here so I can flatten out my. Actually, I might I might be able to do that. So if I do this right, the 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 paint won't be too drippy. But what I'm going to do is the simplest way you don't have to pour paint or anything I'm just gonna dip my brush into my water so my bristles are nice and wet and then if I just touch or tap next to my white paint I can start getting a texture of paint <laughs> yes I've got the table covered in, in white paint. My phone always gets it. The cat probably has paint on her. Um, so what I've get here is um, it's kind of like heavy cream, the texture, okay? And I recommend practicing on your tablecloth first, okay? And I just hold out two fingers and I start tapping. So those, those stars are pretty big, which tells me that my paint is really wet. So maybe less water next time. But you can just kind of tap, tap, tap. And then we get some nice bright stars. I like to concentrate more stars up higher and darker because that's just, you know, how physics and light works. You know, you'd see the, the stars more clearly in the dark sky. And as we get closer to the sunset, we're not going to see as many stars. Like so. Fun. That just never gets old. I'm sorry. Maybe I do stars too much, but I just, that, that will never get old. Um, and I've seen a lot of um, videos on YouTube that do stars where they like um, uh, flick the brushes like with your thumb or a toothbrush. And that probably works fine too. I just, um, my hands are dirty enough anyway with paint. So I just, I like doing it because you don't have to get your fingers dirty. Um, and I find that I have more control doing it, doing it that way. Okay, so I'm going to put that brush away. And if, if you have a liner brush or a really, really teeny tiny brush, I would recommend that for the moon. So I'm just going to grab my little liner brush like this. Getting the liner brush wet will help us get a nice fine point to it. And I'll grab my paint here, and I'm just going to kind of poke, poke my white paint here, move it around, see if it's nice and inky. Yeah. All right, so now I'm going to do this wee little crescent moon. I can show you the original. Just a wee little crescent moon, and the moon is pretty low in the sky in my painting, so I'm going to stick it right here where it's still blue. Let's see, a nice little crescent here. Don't forget to breathe, sometimes I forget to do that.
think I need to walk away. Something like that. Ta da! All right. We got our stars, we got our moon. And by now, our sky should be pretty, pretty dry. Not bone dry just yet, right? Okay, I don't want to fling my canvas around right now because I'm worried about those wet stars dripping. And then they'll be, they'll be really sad. They'll be, they'll be falling stars. They won't even be shooting stars because they'll just be like, bleh. <laughs> so I'm not going to wave my canvas around. Um, but we can wait just a couple minutes in case people need to catch up. If I just touch here, yeah, I'm almost, I'm almost dry. I'm not bone dry. I can feel that it's kind of wet if I press on it. All right. Uh, <laughs> I guess it does. It takes a pandemic. Yeah, and being home all day. Yes, ma'am. All right. So, for our next trick, we're going to be working on these straight out of the Bob Ross handbook trees. His happy little trees, okay? Um, I recommend a flat brush if you have it. So, flat just means that the bristles are crimped down in a flat opening, okay? So, a flat brush can be angled like this, it can be square. Um, so a square or angled brush is going to be really, really helpful. And I can go really slow and take our time with each of these trees here so you can see how it's done. And you know what? I might even grab a square flat brush in case that's what you have. So I can show you that those work as well. So I'm going to grab a square flat brush. All right, so we can actually, I can actually demo um, these trees in three different ways. If we're, if we're truly coming out of the Bob Ross handbook, then he, he would have done these with a fan brush. Um, I tend not to use a fan brush because I find this brush just more multi-purpose. Um, I can do fine lines with it. I can do trees with it. I can cover, um, large swaths of canvas with it. So this is just kind of my all purpose guy, but Bob Ross would have used a fan brush. You can also use a square brush. Okay. And I can kind of show you, um, how to do, do them always. How about that? So at this point I've done enough talking and I got that nice scratchy sound that tells me my paint is dry. So what I'm going to do first, guys, is I'm going to give a place for these, these farther back in the distance trees. I'm going to give them a place to live. And they live on this little, this little hill right here. So I'm going to give those guys a place to live. These guys are just farther away from us, so they're smaller and, and shorter. And these, these guys live on a mound that's closer to us, so they are taller and bigger. But let's, let's give these little guys a place to live. How about that? So I've got my big brush. This is my all-purpose angled flat brush. And dip into some black. And I'm just going to give those little guys a nice place to live. How about that? Nice little hill. I might want to give that another coat once it dries because I got some of my sky shining through. I can do that later. Okay, so 
Um, is this the brush that I want to use, or is this my thinner one? I have two. Yeah, I think this is my thinner one. Yeah, I'm going to use this one. I'm going to put this guy down. All right. So I've got my... I have these two these two angled brushes that I use quite frequently, and I think this is the one that gives me the better, thinner lines. So I'm going to use that one. So I got this nice little hill for my trees to live on. I'm going to take my my angled flat brush. I'm going to move it back and forth on my plate, like so, and I get a nice edge or as nice as I'm going to get with this old, this big old brush of mine. Okay. And then I'm going to pick out where I want this tree to live by just pulling down a tree trunk. And I can tell already, this is not the brush I want to use. Do you see how the bristles just kind of went, you know, they just kind of spread out. I don't, I don't want to do that. So maybe it was this one. <laughs> they look alike to me. All right, so I'm going to move this, move, move back to this brush. All right, so I've got my, my trunk down there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to bring this up close. I'm holding my brush. So the corner, the corner of this, of this angled brush is going to tap onto the canvas. Okay, just a little tap. And then I can turn it to the left a little bit and tap, turn it to the right a little bit and tap. This is really slow. I would go, be going much faster than this. And the more I turn and tap, I can kind of change the way it stamps onto, and I can't help myself. I want to go faster, but I can just start as I go down the tree trunk, I'm going to start tapping wider and bigger right? Okay. So that's, that's one way to do it with an angled brush. You can do the same thing with a square flat brush. So I can show you that as well. I'm going to again, dip into my black paint. I'm going to go back and forth and back and forth to get that edge. Okay. And again, I want to just find my tree trunk, just tapping with the, br the bristles, hor uh, not horizontal, perpendicular, right? So I'm just straight up and down onto my canvas, pull, pull down my tree trunk there. Okay. Might need to get some more paint. All right. Once again, start at the top i have the corner the corner corner of this of this brush and i can just tap right tap a little bit to the right tap a little bit to the left i kind of rock my my brush back and forth hi michelle i can rock my brush back and forth like this okay and again, as I go down the tree trunk, I'm, I'm moving my brush wider and wider. Okay. So that's the flat brush. And now let's do what Bob Ross himself would have done. He would have had his fan brush again, going into that black paint back and forth. You get a nice, flat edge, of course, with this fan brush, which is nice and flat to begin with. I haven't done this in a really long time with a fan brush. I'm totally nervous. <laughs> okay. So what he would do, he wouldn't, he wouldn't pull down the whole tree trunk. He would just kind of tap, give a little tippity tap, um, for the, 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 the tree top there. There we go. Ooh, I'm nervous for this. Got to make Bob Ross proud. All right. So again, he would take that corner of that brush, right? And tap and tap and then start rocking his brush back and forth. And you got to go fast. See, the thing with this fan brush is that it's not holding a lot of paint, right? So maybe that's why I prefer the big brush because I can get a lot of paint on there. Okay. 
Let's get back in there and tap some of those. And the cool thing about the fan brush though, I will say, is that it gets that nice curve. Let me show you here. If you stamp it right, it gives you that nice, that nice curve that kind of looks like the bow of a tree. Okay. So I'm gonna go to my Old Faithful, my angled brush that I like. And I'm gonna start making smaller tree trunks as I go down the hill. Cause for me, they're not only are they going down the hill, but they're getting farther away from me. So whenever I want something to look like it's farther away from me, I will make it smaller and shorter. So any of you out there who are, who feel bad because you feel like you're too short, just say, I'm not short. I'm just far away. All right, get these little guys hanging out here. And I think I want someone hanging out here in the corner. Something like that. How we doing folks? <laughs> Hi, Aria. I don't know. M M Michelle's comment just made me think of this. I don't. I don't know if you, any of you have cats, but my cat will literally knock on the door when I'm in the restroom. Um, I, I and we have uh, this uh, uh, you know full length mirror hanging hanging on the back of the door. So when she like bumps like she knocks it with her paws it makes like this this really loud noise she she is so funny she will just demand attention sometimes <laughs> hi aria i can't wait to see your paintings later once you get to them all right so yeah i hope i hope that was helpful and um so any advice my advice on the trees would be um practice practice first of all um, I've been making those trees since I've watched Bob Ross when I was, I don't know how old, but I've been making them for decades. Um, and we can always, we can always improve and we can always learn. And I can always, and I'm talking about myself, right? Like, that's the cool thing with art is we can always keep learning, keep learning new things, keep practicing. So practice, practice those trees. And also don't be afraid to go fast. Um, I see when I teach people, um, when I can actually see you, <laughs> I think a lot of people get very, um, they try to do things like almost perfectly. They like go one at a time and they take, they think too hard. But if you just kind of let the brush do what it wants, let the bristles work for you then you can kind of get comfortable with what um your paint wants to do and the brush wants to do let the brush do the work for you those bristles they do magical things all right so let's let's give these bigger bigger trees um a little place to live they they just have like this little bit here um they're so big um so I'm just going to get my black paint on my brush again, and I'm just going to floop, put down some ground over here. Okay. And now we can go taller and bigger. Okay. So we've had kind of like practice time over here with those little guys, right? Let's, whoops, I just painted my charging cord black. That's okay. Um, getting some more of that black paint again, going back and forth. Oh, and there, I mean, there are other ways I keep interrupting myself. There are other ways to do trees. You can kind of use a small brush and kind of paint individual branches and things like that. Um, there, there's a ton of way to do trees. So just have fun, use, have, and, um, have fun figuring out those trees. All right, let's do three more trees. 
big old trees on the left. I'm going to move this to the side here so I can get a good angle. And I'm going to start here and I'm going to make that my uh, tree sound effect. Shunk. All right. That's a nice one. Nice big old tree. I'm going to give him some branches. Again, I've hold, I'm holding my brush up at the corner. Little tap, tap, back and forth. Again, that just pressing, just pressing with those bristles gives that nice impression that we've got branches and, and pine needles and foliage just kind of hanging out. And then I love getting towards the bottom because you get towards the bottom and it's like, eh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Just smudge it all together, right? How about that? Let's do another one. All right, do, 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 do. We're going to go over here. I'm going to pull this one down into an angle a little bit. And actually, I'll do two more in an angle. How about that? Why not? So thanks again, guys, for for being here with me on a Tuesday afternoon. I've so enjoyed seeing all your paintings over these past few weeks. And if you're joining us for the first time, I, I've been on my Paint with Jackie page here on Tuesdays at 2 o'clock. And I'm also at the Jana Marie Foundation page on Thursdays, also at 2 o'clock. So we can just have a nice little painting wellness break, get those creative juices flowing. They always It always makes me feel better to create, especially in these crazy, crazy times when everybody's at home. Creating makes me feel better. It's a nice little, um, brings me joy and it also kind of relaxes me too. And I hope, I hope that you guys had fun following along with this. This was basically a, a, a master class in blending and Bob Ross style trees. So I hope you enjoyed it and I cannot wait to see your photos. I so enjoy seeing them. So again, thanks for being here. I will be on the Jana Marie Foundation Facebook page on Thursday, also at 2 o'clock. Thanks for being here. I hope we brought you some joy today. And this is Jackie, and I'll see you next time.